Hello there, first things first, make sure you have VirtualBox installed with the VirtualBox extension pack to make USB work a bit better. And if you can see there in the bottom right, I have the sort of Lexar USB micro SD adapter sort of attached to my VirtualBox session. And that VirtualBox is running um, running Web Converger, the latest Web Converger. So I launch Web Converger in vir VirtualBox in debug mode, and then I get to use the the console and the window manager and all the rest of it in this mode. And uh, I I've already started here the recording by um, by starting on the on, on the instruction page. And I've attached the USB stick and um, the micro SD thing. You can tell because if you type D message, you can see this SDF drive. That means it's uh, connected. And it's an 8 gigabyte micro SD card that I'm working from. And what I'm basically going to do in Web Converger from Windows 10 in that virtual box. We're going to be just following the instructions on this web page. And uh, in the web page it says SDB being the drive, but I found that when I attach the micro SD card in Windows 10 uh, with VirtualBox extension pack installed, it became SDF for Foxtrot. I hope you're familiar with um, the console here. I was just making sure I had everything installed. Uh, to launch the console, it's uh, Control Shift and Enter to launch terminal, and then to change to the root user is sudo minus i. So, to be honest, if you get this far, if you if you get this far in the sense that D message is reporting that your micro SD is attached to your virtual box. Um, really, you, you don't even have to watch me. Just what I'm doing is copying and pasting commands. You can just sort of skip ahead. Really, it's it's really quite boring to watch this. You'd be listening to me all this point. Yep, D message basically shows like what the system is up to the system log and then I proceed here yeah first things first I need to partition it with FDisk so yes uh, for people who don't want to follow all these instructions and I must say it's not easy. I um, I have to sort of summon up the courage to do it myself. Um, yeah, sending you a, a micro SD card would be probably the better option. Um, I also could probably do it the way Ro Rosbian do it, but why don't I do it the way Rosbian do it? Um, I guess I just never got to creating an ISO. And another thing that is important with the Rosbian um, sort of methodology is that you need to expand the, f the file system. And that means writing for me to write some code that basically expands the file system on the the first boot or something and um, yeah since I wasn't prepared to write that or copy and paste whatever Rosbin did I have this sort of more long-winded uh, approach but this long-winded approach basically explains uh, to hopefully con con I actually want to do Kind of appeal to contributors, to developers, to, to perhaps work on this open source project. 
you know, everything open, uh, Web Converger does is open source. So I just wanted to almost get started here and and uh, let people contribute. Um, yeah, my instructions could be a bit better, I think. Yeah, it wasn't clear that I had to change the uh, mount directory there. So, um, yes, I have created the XT4 file system and then I'm using GitHub actually as the way I distribute Web Converger. And here I am configuring it to pull down from GitHub. I'm on a poor connection in Malaysia. Hopefully this will be a lot faster for you. Yes. But if you're still here, I might as well explain some other aspects. Um, development is somewhat stalled in the Raspberry Pi 2 version, and I explain why on, on one of my blog, debase.com. Basically, the video driver, the Broadcom video driver on the Raspberry Pi 2, um, has a proprietary GPU sort of driver issue. And the way that WebKit 2 works nowadays, the WebKit is the um, sort of web re renderer, you can think of it. Um, WebKit 2 sort of ties in with the GL driver quite closely nowadays. That's the way it sort of works. And since the GL driver isn't ready on Raspberry Pi 2, or in fact it's being re-engineered right now, um, the sort of uh, mapping can't be made, and hence uh, WebKit 2... Um, on Raspberry Pi 2 is a bit of a mess and uh, until that's fixed then I probably won't update it until it's fixed which is a bit sad um, already the browser, well the browser is not that old the browser is probably about coming up to a year now old which is not that bad compared to very laggard browsers like Internet Explorer. All the functionality just generally works. Generally. Um, there's a couple of deployments of, of this, um, but only in like a signage use case. Like, for example, it's used in the hacker space in Singapore, and it's just used as like a notice board. And I, as I've mentioned before, I don't recommend this port for... Um, I don't recommend this port for... Anything interactive, really. It's great for showing things on a, but otherwise, the interactivity is pretty, pretty poor experience. So um, I skip along there, and it's finished. The the sort of pull of all the data, and uh, just carry on following the instructions. Right and back, I just had to test to just see the recording. When I meant skip ahead, I mean like follow the instructions without me listening to me. Um, oh, one of the peculiar things about the Raspberry Pi is that the bootloader can only read from um, a FAT32 formatted partition. So this is why there's this awkward second part where I'm making um, a FAT32 partition and then copying in the boot files into it. 
why it doesn't support uh, ext4 by default I probably won't know but I guess having it at FAT32 makes I think FAT32 is probably yes let's be honest it is more ubiqu ubiquitous than ext4 but ext4 is an amazing file system rock solid very fast and it's the default on Linux but unfortunately ext4 cannot be viewed or used on Mac OS 10 or Windows it's a shame because it is really rather good. I'm just installing DOS S, DOS FS tools because that's not installed by Webcam Verger by default, and that allows me to to um, make that file system. Uh, oh yeah, I think the instructions missed out a make the. You have to make the directory of the, the mount point before you can mount it there. It's all a bit little it's all a bit pedantic computers, aren't they? So once that, that copy's done, um you I the next command you don't see me running it, it is just the power off. And uh, wait, wait until the computer powers off because sometimes. Uh, oh, sorry, I need to unmount it first. Yeah, that's important. That's crucial. The mounting is incredibly important because sometimes it doesn't flush to the disk. So I power off and, um, and then I put the micro SD card in my Raspberry Pi 2 and I booted it up. And it worked. So that's how you install Raspberry Pi 2 on from Windows 10. I hope you found this useful.